assistance. Please stand. Before we get started, I'd just like to remember uh, there's a picture of Harold Hansen up. Harold uh, was a great public servant, uh, served on the Bakersfield City Council, I believe from 1995 until 2016, uh, second longest serving city council member. He passed away this last weekend, and he was a Kern Cog member from 2011 to 2015, and board chair for three years. So. He was a fun guy and uh, did a lot of good work, so we appreciate him. Roll call, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Couch? Here. Alcala? Here. Blades? Present. Crump? Here. Tafoya? Here. Flores? Here. Cryer? Here. Navarro? Here. Lisinovich? He's on. Okay. Dixon? Here. Prout? Here. Garcia? Here. Scrivener? Bob Smith? I'm here. Phil Smith? Trujillo? Here. Vasquez? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public statements online? I don't really no, and I see none here. Special action item, Assembly Bill 361, authorizing teleconferencing under certain conditions. Ms. Napier. Yes, Mr. Chairman and members of the um, council, uh, this is our regular item that we have been adopting so that we can continue to have uh, both virtual and in-person meetings. And this uh, resolution goes from June 16th to July 16th of 2022, and we would like we would ask the, the committee to uh, adopt resolution 2229. Thank Th you. Thank you. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call Second. vote, please. Couch. Yes. Yes. Alcala. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Flores. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Dixon. Yes. Prout. Yes. Garcia. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Phil Smith. Trujillo. Yes. Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Consent agenda opportunity for public comment. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in a least listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Does any 
Member want to remove an item from the consent agenda? Any public want to remove an item? Hearing none, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. I second. Roll call vote, please. Vasquez. Yes. Trujillo. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Garcia. Aye. Prout. Yes. Dixon. Yes. Navarro. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Flores. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. And Couch. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans report, District 6, Mr. Navarro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, members. Um, I just want to give a couple updates on a couple of uh, funding opportunities. There's kind of unprecedented funding available for the federal programs. And so a couple we're kind of highlighting. And last week we talked, or last month, sorry, we talked about the reconnecting communities. Just give you some timeline. So that notice of funding opportunities expected this summer. And so basically these are projects we've, where they feel like infrastructure is as disconnected communities. And there's $1 billion over five years. And so the reason I want to report these timelines before the NOFO is because <clears throat> for Caltrans-led projects, and we've been asked for each district to come up with two infrastructure projects and two um, planning uh, study projects, which are both eligible under this program to give to headquarters. And they'll be vetted by headquarters. I guess they'll select the most competitive ones. So we're actually reaching out to our partners. I'll be sending, making sure my staff's reaching out to your teams if they have any concepts or ideas they'd like us to look into. But like I said, we're limited to two infrastructure and two planning. And we have to do this in short turnaround. So we're being asked to do prepare intake forms. And this also applies to any letter of support you may want for your agency for maybe a project you're doing off the state system. We have to do that by June 30th and provide basic project information for it to be evaluated. Um, the other program I wanted to highlight is the Safe Streets and Roads for All grant program, another federal program. And this one has $5 billion over five years. So a lot of money available. Um, that application due September 15th. And these, so this one, the state's not eligible for, but we are encouraging our local partners to go after projects, um, you know, for they have, you know, safety or incident issues. And um, the reason I stress this is because if you want a letter of support for Caltrans, um, we have to do the same process, intake form, evaluate it. And those are due by July 22nd. Like I said, I'll put this in email, send it all to your respective teams. And if they have any questions, they can reach out to me or my team um, to make sure we want to really compete for these federal dollars that are available. And there's a lot of the federal programs. I mean, there's, I think we're, we're I saw a list of the day, there are about 18 programs we're looking at for transportation dollars, uh, things for climate change as well. And <clears throat> there's about 11 more programs we're looking at with the to be determined dates that are gonna be released between now and the end of the year. And there's gonna be a short turnaround for all these. So um, start brainstorming projects and, and potential opportunities to pursue these grant funds. And I'm um, happy to work with you with our, with our teams. So as far as projects go, um, the first project, Bakersfield Freeway Connector, uh, expect contract to be completed by winter of this year. Uh, the bridge widening on westbound 58 over 99 is complete. The new loop connector from westbound to southbound 99 are now open. A new traffic pattern is active. The detour has been removed. Progress is also being made on the pavement work along southbound 99, including the southbound Ming off ramps. Uh, the 99 rehab, Palm Avenue overcrossing to Beardsley Canal Bridge. Uh, schedule work for this month so they'll be finishing up the concrete pavement work and there's some final striping and punch list items remain uh, the state route 170 boat goins boulevard uh, complete the barrier at the loop ramp and complete final striping and that project should be wrapped up by next month on state route 99 as well rehab project old us 99 to white lane uh, so they're continuing with eucalyptus tree removal um, the work between panama lane and white lane includes lowering the freeway the inside lanes and the northbound off-ramp on-ramp at State Route 230, 223 is closed and expected to reopen later this month. Uh, this project has a longer uh, completion date of spring of 2023. The State Route 184 Sunset Roundabout, um, currently before construction commences doing some utility relocation, we expect a full construction to start in August. Uh, construction activity started for the State Route 223, 184 Roundabout, so they're still working on stage one, about 10% complete. Uh, the Union Avenue um, 
active, uh, high intensity activated crosswalk or the Hawk. So that one was, I think come in last month. That was awarded to Griffith co uh, Company on May 9th. Uh, we expect the signal poles to arrive here in the next week or so, and then con full construction activity will start probably end of this month or first part of July. So we're probably a few weeks out from construction on that long anticipated project. Um, Santa Fe roundabout and chapter. So we're in the environmental phase. The draft environmental document was circulated publicly from April 29th to May 29th. So now we're working on the final environmental document. Uh, that one's a little farther out as well because construction activities for that won't start for a few more years. The uh, State Route 46 conventional expressway project is segment 4B. Um, this is the one where, where the girders failed. So we, we had a workaround plan to keep work going out there. Uh, the contractor started work this week from lost doing some uh, some road work on con uh, contract will start work on from Lost Hills Road to east end of the project, which started uh, earlier this week. So they are keeping active out there. Um, and then lastly, the uh, State Route 46 4C segment. This project currently in design phase. Uh, the project plans are with the office engineer and right away acquisition is underway. We expect to have this project ready to list for advertisement uh, next month. And that completes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Michael. And that's good news on Union Avenue. We've been working on that for Absolutely. a while. Absolutely. Yes, that's, thank you. That's very good. I, I have a comment for uh, Michael, uh, Chairman Smith. Sure. M Michael, as you know, uh, and you mentioned Old 99. Old 99 is State Route 204. It was a um, conventional highway and expressway before the new 99 was built. And that was built in 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. and it it really did bisect Bakersfield. So I'm very interested in that reconnecting communities because mm -hmm. 99 actually did uh, split uh, the Bakersfield metropolitan area. And uh, Bakersfield has been working on a project that will reconnect uh, the west side of 99 to the east side. It's called the Hageman Flyover. Uh, we've, they've been working in partnership with Caltrans to do that and they've been um, working, we've been working too, because uh, Kern Cog has uh, contributed money towards that project, to cobble enough money uh, to reconnect the two sides of 99. Uh, we have a project that's 100% design, 100% environmental done. They're in the right-of-way phase right now. I think it uh, may fit perfectly into that category. I'd like uh, to talk to you, Diana, and maybe uh, Bakersfield Public Works uh, about uh, potentially nominating that project. Yeah, we absolutely can. And what I have my team doing this weekend in preparation for this project, I asked them to start pulling together projects, you know, basically have a, a list that we can start the prioritization project process. And um, that one was listed on there as one of the ones my staff came up with for consideration. And um, what I plan to do is uh, happy to have a fur uh, further conversation with you, as well as Diana and I think what we envision happening is have a list of potential projects, obviously sit down with my director and have that conversation. But um, yeah, definitely is on our list of one of the potential projects to consider. It, it actually it, connects to old 99, so right. it literally reconnects the old route over 99. Right, so I think we could tell a pretty compelling story with a project like that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just had one other comment on, uh, I've been bugging you on the Frank Kern mm -hmm. Canal bicycle path, and I know we've, we've got the appraisal now, which was the what you told me we were waiting for, and so uh, are we going to be able to move I hope so. So, that um, 76, please. Yeah, and I, I packaged that information, sent it up. Um, well, I sent up the information that the president received. You know, the sticking point's been that getting that CNM agreement, which the railroad said they just needed the appraisal. What we did in advance of this, probably a couple of weeks ago, our, our local assistance team, we packaged that, sent it up, just basically waiting for that one paper to insert. So, we, we have a placeholder um, in the queue already. So, like I said, I think it's really just contingent on, on trying to wrap this whole CNM thing up in the next, hopefully, however long it takes the railroad. Um, but I think that's our critical path still, but be assured, like I said, it's already been submitted, so it's been in the queue for at least a couple of weeks now as a placeholder. Okay, appreciate but, um, you. Keep yeah, an eye on it. We try yeah. and, and uh, yeah, have someone fully assigned to doing that. Yeah. He's been following up on a daily basis. So um, I think yeah, and, and the help from your team of the city and, you know, Director Hakimi pushing on that has helped move this prop. But that's kind of the tool we need to get things going to just right. to lock to secure that up. But we have been having parallel conversations with our headquarters right away, folks, if there's any possibility for a workaround to accelerate even beyond that point but i think once we have that piece of paper then then it's fully in the, in the control of my shop where it's just inserting a paper and we're and we're, and we're signed off
Okay. So thank you. Any thank other you. comments for District Six? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, I had a question for Aaron, and that is uh, the first program was described there, the federal program. Would any of the those segments of road that we were looking at in the rural highways um, be good candidates for that? Mm, Supervi Supervisor Couch, my understanding of the program, and I don't have 100% of the details, it's, it, it is uh, geared towards uh, freeways that are uh, fully access controlled that literally uh, bisected communities. Most of the highways that go through the, our rural communities are, are not uh, freeways and you can still cross them relatively easily. Um, that's my understanding, but I, I will uh, look into the program uh, further. I, I so mean, for example, Lost Hills or, or something, you know, uh, 184 goes through Lamont, 223 goes through Arvin. Uh, anyway, just a thought. Thank you. Uh, I, I have, uh, thank you, Supervisor Couch. I have one more sure. uh, comment, Michael. On behalf of Wasco, I appreciate uh, your, your help in delivering those two uh, projects in Wasco. I was going to mention it a little later, but I will mention it now. In, in the board folders tonight is, is the uh, Caltrans uh, delivery report. You know I report to you every year on how we do on delivering our federal funds for the year. Currently, Kern Cog is third in the state at 78% delivery. If we can collectively, Michael, deliver the two Wasco projects and the two Bakersfield projects, we will be at 106% delivery, helping the statewide average uh, of delivery and moving us from third to second place. So we appreciate your help on both the Bakersfield projects and the Wasco projects. If we can deliver all four in the la next month, it will move us from 78 per, uh, percent to over 100. Thank you. Any other comments for District 6? District 9, please. Good evening, Chair and Council Members. First, allow me to extend condolences for the loss of Mr. Hansen. Um, and all the good work and efforts uh, he put out in his time. Thank you. Um, regrettable there. Uh, apologies, Kirsten Helton is not able to join you there in the room tonight, but better not, she is taken ill, so she's not with us this evening. But in segueing there, allow me to introduce a new staff member we have with us. His name is Neil Peacock, and he is now our senior transportation planner in District 9. And I'll allow him a moment to say hello to you. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm really glad to make your acquaintance. I will be the senior transportation planner or transportation planning branch chief out there in Bishop. Um, and I've, I've had my team give me a briefing on all of the uh, partnership and project priorities of, of mutual benefit um, with Eastern Kern County. So I'm really looking forward to um, strengthening and continuing to, to improve on the relationship between the district um, and, and the COG over there. Um, by way of background, I'll make this very brief. I used to be um, a regional transportation planning agency um, planning and project delivery program manager myself. I lived it, um, in your shoes for many, many years there with the Amador County Transportation Commission. Uh, developed a bunch of really exciting um, project and funding partnerships with adjacent counties, with uh, Caltrans District 10, um, and before that, I did this, a similar position with the Yurok tribe up there in Del Norte County. Um, so I've got a fair bit of history in terms of um, what life looks like through your lens um, and how we can develop successful project delivery and funding partnerships. So um, as I uh, integrate into the role, I'll definitely be following up with Aaron and company, um, County Public Works and so forth um, to explore the potential for synergy uh, between our two agencies um, and, and maybe I'll just um, call it a good um, at that for now um, because hopefully there'll be more uh, details and proposals forthcoming in that regard. So I'm looking forward to listening into your conversation and getting to know you all um, better as the relationship um, um, progresses and, and, and as I onboard into my new, into my new role. So uh, thank you, Danae, for the introduction and um, thank you, Chair, for allowing me to join. Thank you. 
Appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you, Neil. Uh, go ahead and I'll have him put his contact information in the chat mm -hmm. so we can follow up formally as we do normally um, after meetings with those details as well. Um, so on with the show. We are undergoing our internal review and completion of the final environmental document for the Keene Pavement Project. So hoping to wrap that up very soon. Uh, we wanna thank you very much for inviting us to participate in the High Speed Rail Subcommittee and look forward to that upcoming meeting. Uh, the Freeman Gulch Safety Project, which is uh, in the planning phase, is coming to a close and getting that planning document wrapped up. We had a successful public engagement process on that with uh, over 90 some odd comments received. Uh, the majority of many of those comments came back though and asked, when are the four lanes coming? Hmm. So back, uh, back where we started from a little bit, but that project will move forward in our shop and be funded that way. Um, thank you, Michael, for uh, bringing up those funding opportunities. Much appreciated. I was also gonna mention that uh, reconnecting communities program. And I know Michael's gonna send out an email and certainly uh, Neil and, and Catherine Carr and our group will also follow up, but certainly reach out to us if you have any thoughts or ideas. I'm gonna also throw the link to it in the chat. So Mr. Couch or any others wanna kind of get a jump on it and start looking at it, uh, that link will be there for you. On to construction updates. The Rosamond Mojave Rehab Project is uh, trying to wrap up still. Both northbound lanes are open. All ramps are open through the project area and work has now resumed on that inside southbound lane. Speed limit remains 55 miles per hour through the construction zone. On State Route 178, some utility work is going on this week. Um, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. at two locations between Easy Street and the end of Cane Break Creek Bridge, and the other between the junction of State Route 14 and Red Rock Inyo Kern Road in Inyo Kern. Drivers may experience delays up to 20 minutes. And just a precursor for next week, a potential 15-minute delay, 15-minute delays out there. There's going to be a Randburg guardrail repair project going on on 395 half a mile north and half a mile south through the Red, Bo Red Rock Ransburg Road. Uh, and crews will be re uh, repairing guardrail in that area. So again, one-way traffic control may be warranted, 15 minute delays anticipated. That concludes my report this evening. If you have any other questions or comments, please. Any questions from members? I, I have a question. Uh, yes, Kyle Blades. Okay. Yes, Kyle. Oh, sorry to interrupt, um, but I'll go ahead since I, I have the floor. Danae, thank you for that. Um, good to meet you, Neil. Uh, I am a city councilman in Ridgecrest, California. Uh, first question, you mentioned the Ransburg guardrail repair since that's just right out of town. I think that you said that was going to be tomorrow or here soon. Uh, the Ransburg guardrail is actually happening next Tuesday from 8 to 3. Looks like it's just a one-day repair in that area. Okay, thank you. And then the next uh, is a question and a comment. First, the comment is thank you for uh, thank you, uh, Caltrans, for all the assistance along 178 as it goes throughout town. They're always uh, very quick to respond and assist in the medians and any other any other way. Uh, the question I have, I think I posed it last time, and a somewhat of an answer filtered down through the staff. That is with the light going up on 178 that is going to allow traffic on and off the local installation uh, do we know when that light is going to go live a lot of public are asking that question i do not know that off the top of my head councilman councilman blades and this is let let me follow up again on that i'm sorry if you tried to pursue an answer for that and didn't quite get where you needed to go with an answer so again you're talking about a light being activated on 178 that's that's correct. Did I get on, that on right? Side. Yes, yes. You know the roads being uh, has a big stoplight going in. It's been much needed for a long time, so don't take it as criticism. And an answer did filter down through staff. What the answer that was given to staff at the time was that they they Caltrans are waiting on SCE, and so that could still be the answer. I'm just trying to follow up. Okay, gotcha. Yes, thank you. I will. Uh, I'll follow up again and see if we have a any better answer at this point. Thank you so much. You bet. 
Mr. Mr. Chairman, can I ask uh, a qu yes. comment for Danae? Certainly. Danae, um, we've been talking about um, reconnecting, uh, reconnecting right, isn't the right word, connecting um, California City and Edwards through that uh, service road and connection. I think that may be a, also a good fit for the this reconnecting communities, even though it's technically not a reconnect, it's a, it's a connect. So uh, I know yeah, Catherine and I have talked about that too. I, I think that we should definitely look at look at it for that, Aaron. Okay, Agreed. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments for District Nine? Hearing none. Executive Director's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. I have a few items on this agenda. Uh, the CTC. Next CTC meeting is June 29th and 30th. Uh, we have items on that agenda at, as Kern Cog and several of the, the cities and the county have items. So, uh, and that uh, CTC meeting will be held both uh, online and in person. Congratulations to all the cities that uh, submitted ATP cycle six applications. Arvin submitted a project, Bakersfield eight projects, Delano, Kern County submitted uh, five projects, Delano one, Taft one, Tehachapi two, Wasco one for a total of 60, over $62 million. So good luck to all the applicants and we will know um, who gets picked for the state awards in a few months and then we will go through a, a process ourselves um, to uh, award projects after the state awards are made. On June, I'm happy to, to say on June 9th, Kern Cog was recognized as the first runner-up by the Caltrans Local Technical Assistance Program Build a Better Mousetrap competition in the Smart Transformation category for the Cog's integrated performance measure process used in developing the Regional Transportation Plan. Kern Cog's program has now been nominated by CSU Long Beach into the national competition put on by the Federal Highways Administration. Staff uh, led by um, Rob Ball has done a, a really great job in this area. Over the last month, I've um, continued to meet and so has staff on um, issues related to State Route 99 and State Route 58, the missing connectors. Thank you to the City of Bakersfield um, for last night approving a uh, 65% design contract to, to get that first missing connector uh, designed to 65%. Uh, we continue to meet with Caltrans over the improvements that Caltrans is proposed to make on State Route 204. Um, and if some of those improvements look anything like the improvements at uh, 24th Street and um, 99, uh, we're really looking forward to them. As, as was mentioned last month, Michael, those those green uh, bicycle markings really make make a big difference. Great. And I, I have talked to John about it looks so good that people are already asking, okay, when is the next, when is the opposite direction going to be built? Mm -hmm. uh, we continue to uh, coordinate on 7th Standard and State Route 43. I've met with um, Congressman Valadeo's uh, staff and asked him specifically uh, for an earmark for that. And I've let Diana know that. Continue to meet on State Route 33, and thank you. I got word in our last uh, joint meeting that you guys are going to design or not des design and um, have your environmental work show that the shoulders um, are viable, and we will work towards coming up with some money for that. <coughs> I'm glad to hear that uh, the contractor, Granite Construction, has started work again on State Route 46. And uh, as always, I'm continuing to uh, work on trying to get those truck climbing lanes done uh, in, the n in my <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman, subject to any of your questions. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Hearing none, we will adjourn the TPCC meeting and move to the COG meeting. Roll call, same. And public comments are the same. Rules, are there any public comments? Hearing none, consent agenda opportunity for public comment. 
Does any member wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll hear a motion. Second. Roll call vote, please. Couch. Yes. Blades. Aye. Crump. Yes. Tafoya. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Prout. Yes. Garcia. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Trujillo. Yes. And Vasquez. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Just a couple of items on this agenda, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, we have some upcoming San Joaquin Valley meetings on Friday, June 24th. And this applies to you, Chairman Smith, uh, Mayor Prout, and Supervisor Scribner. The San Joaquin Valley Policy Council meeting will be meeting at 9 a.m followed by the San Joaquin Valley housing meeting at, at 10.30 a.m. Agendas will be forthcoming. Michael will send those out. Again, that was for Chairman Smith, Mayor Prout, and uh, Supervisor Scribner. Uh, also, the high-speed letter that we sent out April 15th from jointly signed by Kern Cog, Wasco, Shafter, Bakersfield, and to Hatchby has been acknowledged verbally, but we still have not uh, received any response, um, either about a meeting or a response to all the issues that we uh, raised in our letter. And that's, that's unfortunate. About two weeks ago, I was uh, promised a response by last week. In your, finally, in your folder this evening is a timeline covering June through September, schedule of cash disbursements for April, and the um, performance report I, I briefly mentioned uh, about 15 minutes ago, showing uh, Kern being in third place in the state for delivering our federal funds. And again, thank you to all your, your cities and county staff for delivering it. Y you are the ones that deliver those. And with a little bit more work, we can get to where I like to be and I know all of you expect us to be, and that is over 100% delivery where we're using other people's money to build uh, facilities in, in our, our communities. Uh, subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Any member statements? I do have a statement. Mr. Cryer. <coughs> I think they're kind of getting Things are getting kind of tough here in, in, our, in our state and stuff. And then the government, the government of California has stated several times acknowledging the high cost of fuel, the high cost of taxes and stuff. I understand in July they're going to raise taxes again on fuel. I don't know if you have anything we can say or do because it does affect a lot of people. You know, I'm, I'm spending over between 210 to $220, $30 a day a day in fuel because my uh, or just working on the ranch and stuff all that does is get passed on to the consumer and a lot of other things in transportation there's a way as a cog could we send a letter to the governor to maybe uh, either suspend the increase or do something to help our citizens here uh, in, in California or, or, or Kern County to uh, suspend some of the taxes on our fuel I know this is a start. I know you talked about their rebates and stuff. I hadn't heard anything more about it. Everything's all talk. But I think that we as um, in, in Kern, that we need to address it or say something that we have a concern about the high cost. of, And that it is affected because the higher the fuel goes, the higher the sales tax goes up. And uh, I don't know if we have anything to do or, or we can do or write a letter or anything. Else. It's a question I'm posing to the current cog here. Is that to me or, or to, to your fellow board members? Mm -hmm. no? I'm sorry. What is that? Uh, uh, council, uh, council member, are you, are you asking me or are you asking your I'm fellow asking board members? Uh, everybody, if we, if we can, um, as a board, would have something that we can address it to our, uh, our executive director 
that they do um, propose something to our uh, state legislatures or our governor, what can they do to act upon Because right now they just talk about it, not doing anything. I don't know how everybody else feels and stuff, but I know a lot of my constituents and TAF and also here in Bakersfield that, you know, has concerns about the high cost because it's, it, it's, it, 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 it does affect the fuel prices, our transportation costs. It does affect every aspect of our life as, as, as energy goes up, our cost of, our cost of uh, living goes up higher. And myself, um, I'm making good money and gross. When it comes to my net, I can look at it and say, dang, I should be making more than that. But it's all going back to the cost of goods and the cost of doing business, and it's not working out. And I just like to see what can we do as a cog, as far as all, all our members here. What you guys all think of it is something that we can do to address it. Is it by sending a letter or get a hold of our uh, or even send letters to our uh, representatives, or say assembly, or or uh, senators and stuff, state senators. What can we do as a cog to help to address the issue that's affecting our state? That's what I have to say. I don't know what y'all all think. Thank you, Mr. Cryer. Mm -hmm. Anybody else like to comment? Any member comments? Would staff like to take that as a referral? Uh, I, I will, will s well, let me say, um, Chairman and, and uh, Councilman Cryer, I, I talked to our uh, state el uh, elected officials uh, and their staffs regularly, and my understanding is, is the Assembly and the Senate are in negotiations uh, with the governor over the budget, and one of uh, the items that is on the table is either re rebate checks to car owners. I think that's been taken off the table, and uh, the governor has proposed um, just sending rebates to everyone, not necessarily just drivers, but uh, that is part of the, uh, the budget negotiation process. Um, or actually, it might be part of the trailer bill. The, the budget has already been submitted by uh, by the legislators to the governor and th they behind the scenes work out the details. Uh, I can, can and I have talked to both uh, Assemblymember Fong's staff, Salas's staff, and our state senators about the impacts of, uh, of suspending the uh, sales tax, which would uh, reduce the amount of funding that we would get to build transportation projects. I can I can certainly have uh, continue to have conversations with them and give you an update on where they are. I, I believe that they've <coughs> they've taken off the table the idea of suspending the 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 gas tax, but they have put on the table and it's not done yet the idea of sending out rebates. Appreciate that. Uh, have, can I follow up? Certainly. Um, I'm not asking to eliminate all sales tax or all taxes. I'm just asking to suspend the new increase on there. Uh, that way there, they, they, um, I know we have to have money to, for the roads and other and things for infrastructure and stuff. I'm just proposing the, the newer tax. This, and, and the other comment would be, the people who are driving are the ones that impact. The ones that don't have cars, why should they get a benefit of, of a rebate? That just don't make sense. Truck drivers, they're spending between $1,500 or $2,000 just to fill their vehicle up one time. And um, I know when we drive back and forth in Pearl Valley with our trucks hauling our produce and stuff, you know, it, our cost has tripled, more than tripled. And it gets passed along. Like I said before, our gross income has gone way up, but our net is way down. It just don't make sense. It gets passed, it on, it's passed to the consumer, to the taxpayers. They're paying for it. It's not the businesses and stuff. It's the cost of, it's the cost of goods and uh, a, a part, of, part of keeping our doors open. But that's what I was proposing on that, and I just don't like the idea that uh, we still get punished, and the ones that don't produce, or don't drive, and stuff. Why, why should they be, be rewarded uh, for the rebate? You know, that's my only thing. But thank, thank you. Uh, thank you. Any other comments? We have a couple of certificates of appreciation tonight, Mr. Stramalia. Is he online or? 
in the building? Yes. Hmm. Joe, can you say something? Joe, can you say something? <laughs> he sometimes has problems with his mic. We uh, have. Yes. Now, can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Joe. Uh, appreciate your 30 years of dedicated service to Kern Council of Government. That's you've been working here as long as I've been alive, almost. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, well, well, I get uh, laughing at that. <laughs> No, we do appreciate it. It's, it's <laughs> great to have good, solid, long-term employees. Thank you, Joe, for your service. And we also have a certificate of appreciation for Executive Director Aaron Hakimi, who has actually been here 10 years already. Thank you very much for excellent work. And you have a, he has a plaque as well. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. If you'll bring me Joe's, I'll Appreciate show it to Appreciate the work. Oh, well, that's okay. Oops, okay. and with that, okay. we are adjourned. Yeah.